not to put this light over here. So I don't want you to be able to see it in the, in the um, reflection. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Make sure you say hello when you jump on so I know who's here. Oh, look at the thumbs up. Yay. All right. Hi, Nerdy Crafter. Who's ready for some fun tonight? Hey, Allison. So, and Rinska. So I know you guys have seen me use these stencils quite a bit, but I thought maybe, hey Meg, maybe you guys might like to see something creative with the Lotus stencil. Hey Cheryl. So I thought tonight I would use the Lotus stencil because um, it's, it looks, when you first look at look at it it looks like a one shot one idea type of stencil and i want to play around with it a little bit and show you some other stuff so we're going to play tonight i have an idea it's going to be one of the more simple but i also have created another one that's much more complex so i will definitely show that one as well now I pulled these two stamp sets out. The Resolute Rose I pulled out because I think we're gonna use these little hearts as well. So we have that one standing by. And then I pulled out the Fairy Tale because I thought we'd have a magical spring. Nothing better than having flowers and spring and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna set that aside. We won't need to stamp this till later. We're gonna start with the stencil. So anybody who's um, Who's on right now will get to see it all. Okay, so I'm gonna get up real quick because I need to get my pixie spray. Um, because I didn't spray this stencil yet. And I'm gonna spray it with my pixie spray. It's light tack, repositionable. I don't have enough on mine because I've already been playing with my stencil and it's kind of worn off. I like to spray it over the trash can because it makes everything sticky it's wherever it sprays. Okay, so now we have it sprayed up here a little bit. You're excited to get your order? Do you have, did you order the new release? So awesome. <laughs> okay, so normally I would just lay it on here completely and do the whole thing, but we're not gonna do that tonight. We're just gonna use a portion of this Lotus. So I'm gonna actually put it all the way down here so that I have more room on the card to make other creations, other designs. I got a hair on here. This is what happens when you have lots of puppies around you. And then I'm gonna press it with my espresso, kind of get that, that going on here. It leaves me some room up here to do some other stuff with my sentiment and a couple other things. So again, we're gonna pull out our multi-liner. This is 0.5 multi-liner. This one is the refillable, replaceable nib multi-liner. So you can buy the other ones and they're less expensive, but this part right here on the end pulls out. Usually you use like a nickel or a quarter or something like that. I'm hoping this will work. And you can replace the ink so you don't ever throw this one away. It's kind of like the, the markers. The other ones that are gray and they're skinnier, they're the ones that are disposable. So I use mine a lot, so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna have this kind. Hey, honey. Okay, so we're gonna start off by line arting the part of this stencil that I want to color. 
And this is gonna be really cool when we get done. I, I haven't done this exact design before. I do have one other in the holdings that I'm gonna show you guys here in a little while that I think would be super fun. But this is the one, and you'll see it doesn't take that long. You don't need a lot of pressure, really lightly, just tracing out what you want. I know I've done this on a few other stencils before, but I figured this one would be interesting to watch since it's kind of a, a specific design rather than a mandala type design. Everybody saying hi. All right, here we go. It doesn't take very long, but you do have to be cautious because you don't want to get extra lines in there that are irrelevant. There we go. So I didn't use all of it. I didn't use any of this bottom part right here. You could do it that way if you really wanted to, but it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So now here's the reveal of what we have. Oh, I put too much of this on there. It's kind of ripping my paper a little bit. I didn't bring my eraser either, so that's kind of a bummer. We may have to trace it one more time because I put too much pixie spray and now it's sticky on here. And I need my eraser. Like if you have an eraser, you can just erase it and, but I'll just save that one for when I get home and we'll do it one more time. This time with not as much pixie spray on it. Same spot, it won't take long. I'll move a little faster this time. Can we buy those pens in the shop? No, but you can get them online or you can get them in a uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that. But these are not sold. These are the Copic multi-liners. There are, don't be fooled, there's a lot of other multi-liners on the market, but you need to test because not all of them will work with the Copics. But this one is specifically the Copic multi-liner. The SP just represents the refillable, replaceable, nib, all that good stuff. I have actually replaced the ink and the nibs in these in the past so um, it's not difficult oops almost missed this spot oh that's really a bummer right there but we'll figure out maybe we'll put a dot over it we'll figure out a way to fix it I went too fast you should take your time when you're doing this, for sure. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna do these little ones down here. I just don't, I want it to look just like this is all there is. Opportunity for embellishments, exactly. Yes, I love my Copic multi-liners as well. Hi, Pam. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up. I do have a little mistake in there. We can embellish and we can use our um, our white gel pen. So I tend to use my white gel pen to correct small mistakes like that. So if I just dot my um, white gel pen over it, it'll kind of cover it up. So you can't really see the mistake. And um, then we'll embellish over it. But you can definitely use your white gel pen to cover this up. See? Yay! It won't matter as much inside because we're gonna color the lotus flower. So there we go. That's what I use to make corrections when I have mistakes on mine. So we're for sure gonna roll with this one. The other one was, you know, a little bit sticky. I will clean it when I get home and then I will be able to use it. So other than purple, 
What color do you guys want to make this? Should we make it multicolored? I think we should make it multicolored. But I don't know if we want to go with blue and green or do we want to go with pink and red or orange. I don't know. What do you guys think? Somebody give me some ideas and we'll roll with those. Teal. Okay. Teal. You guys know I like that, that teal. So we'll do a deep blue into a lighter teal. Look, now we got orange. Pink and teal. All right, look at that. We got a lot of... All right, so what we're going to do... Yeah, let me use this one. So I was going to fix this one when I got home, but I think I'm just going to use the back for um, color testing, swatching. Orange and pink. Pink and teal, orange and pink. Look, everybody has an opinion. What do we think? So we got two for teal, I think. Hold on. Two for teal and two for orange. So we're going to make it teal and orange. There we go. Okay, so that, thank you for challenging me tonight. Teal and orange are going to be a challenge, but we can do it. So let's go with, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's start with B18. It's a little darker, but <laughs> Rin's got laughing. That's right, exactly. Go ahead, challenge me. I'm up for it. All right, and then let's see which one I want to put with that. Maybe... Hmm, that's a little too close. Let's try four. Four is better. Okay, so we have three colors of teal. This is going to be our base teal color, but I'm going to move it into a darker blue green and then out into an orange i kind of need that blue green in there so let's see this is our bg09 and let's use bg07 this i know this sounds crazy and you guys are probably like what is she doing but we're gonna mix these five colors together so we get some real cool teal and blue and then we got us move to orange so let's see um what orange do i want to use i like it to be a little brighter orange i don't know about you guys let's look at 65 and 61 i don't use them very often 65 and 61 might want to do that 68 as well I think the 65 is not quite dark enough to blend with the teal. Hmm. A little better. I think we can work with that. Okay, so we have blue and orange. Are you guys ready for this? It's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to start. Here's my final swatch. I'm going to start with the darkest color being this B18. Let's put it in my little Copic holder here. I'm going to start with B18. You love bright colors? Me too. And then I think we're going to move into BG09. Nice. That works out good. And then we're going to move to maybe BG07. Put them in our holder in the order. And then we're gonna move to B16, which is lighter. So we're gonna have some blue-green going on in there. And then we're gonna switch to our B04, which is gonna lighten that up a bit. And then we're gonna play with mixing this 68 with the blue. It looks a little bizarre right now, but I think it's gonna be okay. 
And then we're going to fade it out a little bit with this 65. And then if we need it, we'll do 61. So we're gonna have blue to orange. All right, this is gonna be interesting, blending blue and orange, but we're gonna try it. Boy, that paper is sticky. I'll tell you. All right, here we go. Okay, you guys are ready. Here we go. All right, starting with B18. Yeah, is that okay? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, I'm gonna turn it upside down. We're gonna start with it right here. Still a little bit of sticky on here. I really sprayed that pixie spray like there was no tomorrow, didn't I? I think that's okay. All right, so we're starting in the base. Hello, hello. And we gotta have a little bit in here. And then I'm gonna touch just these tips over here. And these tips right here. So we're gonna kinda do an ombre, but we're fading into orange, so it's gonna be, it's gonna take a little work. So there we go, we got our first color in there. All right. And then next we're gonna to go to BG09. This one's gonna change the color just a bit, but it will all be okay. We have to work a little bit with this one to get that blend looking really good, so we're gonna go over it a second time. My lighting's not that great in here, so a little harder for me to see. Um, hi, Michelle. This is our Lotus stencil. Hey, Mama. Now this looks like the regular Lotus. It's just not all the parts of the Lotus. But stay tuned, don't go away, because I'm gonna show you another way to use this stencil other than this way. I already have it drawn out, but I want to show you guys. But I want to do this first, and then we'll go into different ways to use the stencil, just like we did in the other video where I show you at the end after we color this one up. Different ways to move that. I'm going to be honest, I absolutely have no idea how I'm going to color these top ones. We're just going to focus on the bottom and we'll move forward from there. Okay, so now we're on BG07. I'm going to be going kind of rogue tonight. Look at that pretty teal color. That's coming out really nicely. I'm liking it a lot. This is sweet sentiment paper, so it's blending like smooth like butter. Loving it very much. Nice. A little bit there. Let me keep moving with this one. What do you guys think so far? Teal color? Color fitting? Hi, Rosemary. You guys hear the puppies? They're super excited because somebody opened the door. They always bark when they go outside. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. We're starting to get this. It almost looks like water, huh? We're starting to get this color in here. There's a little bit of work we're going to have to do on these lines right here but don't worry about that we'll get to that okay so moving next is b16 
This one's moving it out of the teal and a little bit more into the blue. So we have to go over the teal just a little bit to kind of bring that color together. That's pretty cool. We gotta wait till it dries. Just so we can see what it's gonna look like when it dries out. You see how much different it looks live than on the camera. I have a visitor with me today. I like the color. So far so good. We have one more color and then we're gonna have to put some orange in here. So I think we're gonna need to put some blue in the bottom of some of these other petals too, but I didn't wanna do too many at one time. I don't want it to dry too much before I go adding these other colors in there. So I only started with these bottom petals. Sometimes I do the back and forth because I get a little bit of a better blend that way. But that's just me. That's just the way I do it. Okay, let's turn it right side up so you guys can see. Very deep down here, very bright right here. So we need to start bringing in these ones with this color that we have in our hand. As so we move this one up to here, so we kind of have to go across and bring in these ones up to that level as well if we want to keep it, keep following the same pattern. And these little pieces right here, they have to have this color as well. So there we go. We're starting to bring them all in. Hi, Julie. Our roughest, um, our roughest transition is going to be the YR68 from the B04. So I'm not sure if it's going to go real smooth or if we're going to have to do some back and forth or if we're going to have to add another color, but we'll just have to see as we go. Again, I have never done this color combination before, so <clears throat> I'm learning as you're learning. I do want to leave a little bit of the tips of this one for orange, so I'm not going to color it all. I'll leave the top. What the fuck did you grab that from? Clicky, that's not a toy. Okay, moving along. Thank you, Cheryl. We're just Moving along the page, kind of trying to keep the colors even where they all go about the same, the same length, level of height, just so it, it looks more natural. Notice I'm using the side of my marker because I'm really saturating the paper. I want a lot of ink in there so it blends real well for me. So we're not using the tips of our marker, we're using the side of our marker. Get us a really good blend in there. Still brush strokes, just much fatter brush strokes than what we normally do. There we go, starting to build it up. That's really pretty already. Now it's time to go to our um, orange color. Now, I'm gonna start with the 68. I think this is gonna take some work, so be patient. Um, we're gonna start here, and it's a big transition between those two. 
but no worries. We're just going to put that orange in there. And then we're going to come back. We're going to work each one at a time. And we're going to come back with the B04. We're going to start working that transition space. We need that to be just a little bit more smooth. I'm going to put a little bit of this color up into my orange. Just a little bit. And then we're going to use YR65 to kind of work with that transition right there. I think the YR65 will help because there's more colorless blender in the YR65. So it's going to help just work that together without it being such a harsh color. I think we'll tip to tip with the YR68. So this is 68. This is 65. So if anybody thinks that you can't actually blend those two together, it's not true. It might be a darker shade, but you can really work with it. So I'm going to come back with my B04. So this is working with three markers to really get a transition that looks natural. So we're starting to get a pretty good blend be between those. I kind of like that. I don't want to saturate the paper anymore. So we're going to move on to the next one. And we may come back and work that a little more, but we just have to see how it goes. So this is the YR68. I've left all three markers open because I'm working them together. So I'm gonna start with the YR68. Now we're gonna start putting it over top. We're not gonna put a whole bunch. And then we're gonna work with our B04. Start working that a little bit. And then we're going to use our YR65 to help with that transition. I don't want it to be a straight line, so I'm kind of putting a few little, you know, moving into it a little deeper in some spots and not in other spots. This is the YR65. I'm going to put it up here at the very, very top because that's when I'm going to start transitioning to YR65 anyway. And then I'm going to touch on my Y68 for this transition one more time just to keep that orange color there. Okay, so I'm pretty good with that one. I'm going to move on to the next one. It's okay. Um, this is my YR65, so I'm just wiping it off off the um, on a regular piece of paper just to clean off any of the blue that I have on it. And then we're going to start working this one with the YR65. I mean, 68. We're back to 68, and we're only going to bring that up as far as the other colors. So after that, we'll start working in different colors. So we are going to have to put a bit of that in here as well. Okay, putting some down into the blue. Now we're going to take our B04, and I'm kind of leaving that other end on so you can see what color I'm working with at the moment because with having three markers open, and normally I have them all in my hand at the same time, but that would be confusing for you guys, so I'm not doing that right now. But normally I'd be holding them all in my hand at the same time. So we're working out that 65 in there. We're gonna take this B04 and work a little bit into the orange. And then I'm gonna come back with my YR65 and work that out. Just going over that. Kind of working into this one as well, very lightly. So I'm really lightly touching that. It almost looks 
really neat. So see how it's just moving that color into the other color? I see where I'd like to move up a little bit more with the blue right here, but we'll see. We'll keep going. Okay, YR65, that's the marker I have on my hand, so I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna pick up the YR68 again and keep moving. We want to put this a little bit into the blue, just like we did before. And then we're going to go back with the B04 to work out that dark. I may bring in B02. I think B02 will help with that transition, but I want to wait until it's dry before I do that. Okay, now YR68, that one has more colorless blender, so it's going to help saturate that blue transition, just like it did before. And then we want a little bit of it to go back into the blue, just to give that a little bit more. Okay, so they're all looking about, looks like a flame. It does kind of look like a flame. So we're working those in there. I don't want to change any steps at this point. I want to wait until I get all the way across and then I may come in here and touch up with something else, but I want to go all the way across first. So this is my YR68. I'm gonna start working on this one. So when I'm first trying to get the orange in up as far as I want it to go, I don't touch much into the blue, and then I'll go back and go into the blue, but it's not like a solid line. It's sort of jagged, and the reason that I do that is so the blend will work a little bit better. So we're gonna use B04 next. Kind of touching that transition. Doing the same thing going into the orange where I'm just putting some random random points in there, just so that it looks like it's a little bit more of a smooth transition. So this is the YR65, working out. I don't wanna to do too much or I'll go, it, it's gonna bleed outside the line. So I'm doing this a little bit on the slow-mo. Here's my YR68 again. I need to have that up in this one. And then I'm gonna work on this one. We did the whole thing except for the very, very tip of that. We did that one in 65. I kind of want to go down a little bit into that blue there. Now we're going to go to our B04. And I wouldn't normally recommend leaving like your Copic markers open, but I am using these back and forth quite a bit. So I don't mind having them open right now. And don't worry if we go outside the lines, we can push it back in and we can use the white multi-liner to fix any thing that we don't, we don't like. Okay, so moving on now to the last one. And I know this is a repeat, 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 but I want you guys to really see it several times so you feel a little bit more confident with it. So this whole top right here is all gonna be orange. So I'm filling in my orange first with my white R68. And then I'm gonna start touching a little bit into the blue. Back with the B04. If your markers are really juicy, you are not gonna wanna do this with both caps on. I'm only doing that just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now we have to go to our YR65. To work that transition spot. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have a transition from blue into orange. 
Now, let me put my caps back on before I move into the next step that I wanna do. And I believe I'm gonna work with YR61. So 61 is the next one. And although we have a lot of space up here, we're gonna have to use some other color. So we may blend into another color, I just haven't decided. I'm gonna use YR61 and I'm just gonna brush a little bit more into this blue, just to get myself a little bit better transition there so it doesn't feel so, so much of a big jump from one to the other. So we're overlapping the blue with the YR61 because it's a very, very light color. And this is just one last step to get that transition to look really smooth. and I am going a little bit more into the blue. And I'm okay with that because I think that really makes it look better. Who's leaving? Michelle. You're welcome and see you later, Michelle. This is actually working out really good. I like this 61 transition here. So notice I did that after I gave it time to dry It's a little challenging to move from a blue to an orange, but I think we got it. So now that I've touched a whole lot of blue with the top of this marker, I'm just gonna kind of wipe it on paper to make sure I got all the blue off. And now we're gonna go with YR65 and we're gonna start moving forward. We may make the tips of these a dip, another color too. I think, what do we have, pink? Yellow, people were throwing out other colors. Maybe we can add some more in there. I probably could have put a little bit more of the darker colors, but I didn't. So we're gonna end up with some extra space, I think. But that's okay, it'll make it even more interesting. It is springy. So these colors are blending really well. No running, Michelle. <laughs> okay, so we have to pick up some in this one now. We have to pick up this one. We are gonna tip this off with something else, maybe even the fluorescent orange. I don't know, I, have, I can't decide yet. I have to wait till I get all my colors in to decide what I wanna tip it off with. What do you guys think so far? Do you like it? You like it blended out like that? Beautiful sunset. Look at that. It does look very beautiful. I think this one needs just a tad bit more because it's a little bit lower than the other ones. There we go. We're not quite ready to touch this one yet. You like it? I like it too. I think I'd want to work a little more on that transition, but it looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So let's try the BO2. Let's pull the BO2 out and see if that will work this transition a little bit more. I need it to really look like it's flowing from one color to another and not a harsh stop. So we're gonna kind of throw some of this BO2 in here and we are going up a little higher, but we're gonna come back in with our YR65 and kind of work that out. But you kind of have to have a little bit of randomness going on here with these colors in order to make it really appear like it's changing from one to the other. Okay, so back to my YR65. And I'm gonna kinda go over this just like I just did with the BO2. Need a little bit more of that in there. Overlay, like over top of the blue.
that's my ice maker. My, uh, they have an ice maker for me on the counter so I can have ice in my drinks. They're so sweet to me here. I kind of like that. Okay, coming back with the BO2 to kind of wash out a little bit of that um, orange I put in there. And look how much better that looks. So much better. I feel better about it. I don't know about you, but I feel better about it. These are definitely harder to blend out, but we're gonna do it, I'm convinced. So notice whenever we transition from one color to another, and it's an easy transition, they go very, very smoothly. But when it's a harsh color from one to the other, you're gonna have to go back over it with several colors several times to really get that color that you want. So I'm using my YR61 to kind of brush a little bit more throughout the blue. So you'll see the orange within the blue. And that will really change how the transition looks. So a little bit of overpainting, a little bit of underpainting, all that, all the good things. There we go. I like that better. And I do think this looks like some serious flames going on here. Okay. So now we have to do our YR61. Do, do we already do that one? No. Here we go. Ready? You see how light this looks? This is the last one that we had picked out. So we're gonna need another color to transition the tips of our flower. I like how light this is, so I think really a very light peachy pink might look really good with this. Or yellow. Let's do yellow, Cheryl, good call. I really, really like it. Does it feel springy to you guys? It feels springy to me. These bright colors on the ends feel really springy to me. So still keeping it about even along the edge. I need to touch one more time around the transition area on a few of these, kind of darken it up a little bit. Make it look a little better. Uh-oh, we messed it right here. We gotta start working this one. Okay, so we picked blue to orange, but we, um, yes, a light, light yellow. Um, but we didn't pick our last colors. So let's take some well, you guys know what my favorite Y is. So here we go. This is our this is our paper here. So we're gonna go with Y11. That's gonna go really good. And then we're going to do a teeny bit of Y00. And I think that's gonna bring us to the top. So here we go. Y11. Voila. Y11, and this one's going to transition super smooth. I mean, I already know because I've done these, these two colors before. So I know this one's going to transition really well. But look, you guys, we thought we were going to do a two-tone flower, and now we ended up with three, three tones in here. All right, what are you guys thinking? I like this yellow. I'm glad we picked this yellow. I think I'm gonna go 
go over this just so I don't leave any marks in there. There we go. Much better. Love in the yellow. Me too. This really looks like a... Okay. This looks like the window. Okay. I'm serious. Hold on. Let me turn it upside down. Let me turn it all the way around before I explain what I see. We weren't even going for this, but this is what I see. Okay. You ready? This looks like a window with the ocean and the sunset. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. I would, that was not my aim, but that is exactly what it feel like it turned out like. Okay, so now we're on Y00, and that's gonna finish it up, and every time I'm doing the very last color, I always start from the tip and go into the last color. To me, that just helps with the blending, but that's a personal preference. I really like that. White, ca white wave caps in the blue. Oh, wouldn't that be great? We totally could do that. I'm still feeling like this isn't the best transition here. I think I'm gonna try, let me try my YR01. I think that, Let's try YR00. I need, I need a really light color. I'm looking for a very super, there we go, super light orange color for this transition right here. I am just not feeling good about this. I really need this to, to be a little more smooth. So what I was looking for, that's much better. What I was looking for is one that has a lot of colorless blender in it so it will really move this color around and blend it together that's what I want and I feel like we have enough blue in there we don't need any more blue in there so I chose the a very very light orange and I think this will move around the color and get rid of those harsh lines I like that that is really, really helping. Okay, so it's making it look so much better than it did. This is really gonna make it. And this is what I was looking for. Colorless, one with a lot of colorless blender that's gonna really move my color around. So notice how light I went. This is YR000. Look at that. That is super pretty. The ones in the middle blended really, really super well. So I'll need to work a little on these on the outside. I wish I had my um, eraser with me because I feel like I have a little bit of stickiness on there that would come off a lot easier with my eraser. But let's work this one a little more. Might really get that to blend as well as the other ones. I'm trying not to go outside the lines too, but better, better. I like it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next. So we didn't use two awful many colors. I'm gonna grab my um, <laughs> mind blown. I'm gonna grab my colorless blender and my white gel pen. And I'm gonna go in and fix any areas that went outside the lines. Do you like it? So there's a few areas that I feel like I can really see, like right here. I'm gonna push that blue back in. I'm gonna push that orange back in. There's a little bit of orange right here and right here. And this is because we just did a lot of saturation. So, and our lines are very thin because we used a multi-liner. So it kind of moved those, those colors outside. So first we're gonna touch them with the colorless blender, put back in what we can, and then we're gonna clean up anything else with our multi-liner. 
but we have to do the colorless blender part first. Okay, and it has to dry because the white gel pen will pick up the, um, the color. So if it's still wet and you put your white gel pen over it, it's going to change the color of the white gel pen to whatever color you went over. So you don't want to do that. Go with your comment of the water and sunset. Add some islands, land, and birds. Dude, no, but thank you. Thank you, Meg. No, I already have a plan for this card. <laughs> I'm not gonna do birds and stuff at this point. But maybe we could try this again another time. Challenge, challenge accepted and proven. You can always blend the colors. Just got to work it, work it, work it. I wish I had some little birds. Little birds would have been amazing. But that is, that's not what we're going to have tonight. Okay. So I want the little hearts. I want the little hearts from the Resolute Rose set. And the sentiment that says have a magical spring from fairy tale. So we're kind of mixing a whole bunch of stuff up tonight. How fun is that? So we have a stencil, two stamp sets. I mean, we are really, really gonna do a lot of stuff in here. Hi, Kathy. Oops. So I'm going to place these down exactly where I want them. I kind of want these little hearts to show up over here. I think this is super cute. I might want to do it. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe I want to do it this way. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna stamp these out. We are gonna color in the hearts. This is where you're gonna get a little bit of that pinkish color you guys been asking for. Use my espresso. I'm gonna do the magical spring one more time. I did not stamp the hearts again. I don't think I need I needed to do that, but I really wanted the magical spring to be slightly darker than the rest of it. Oh, I'm sticking all my magnets together. Thanks. Um, okay, so we may have to trim this down just a little bit in order to do to make our card, but for now let's let's roll with the colors. So I want to put some red in the heart, but I'm also going to put some of the yellow that we had already. So let me close my ink pad so I don't write all over myself. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to blend some red and yellow, I think. R27. R14, and right now I have Y11. Mm, I might like Y13 better on that one. Yeah, let's roll with the Y13. Okay, so we're gonna do red with a little bit of yellow, and I'm gonna start the red, the R27, at the tops of the the hearts and I'm gonna move down into some yellow that will go with the this is our 14 which is kind of a little bit of a pinky salmon color So we're kind of getting a little bit of red, but it's 
not real red. And then we're going to move that into our Y13. Remember when I said there's, when it's the last little bit, I usually come from the edge. We're going to let that sit for a minute. And then in order to break up that, I'm going to tip to tip with the R14 and the Y13. Then I'm going to wipe it off because look, there's some red on my yellow. You see that? Until it's back to yellow. And then I'm going to come through here and blend this out again. And that'll give me a more smooth transition. So you guys saw how I did that, right? I put the R14 and then I put the Y13 and then I did a tip to tip, wiped it off. And now we have a transition from red to yellow without making it really orange. <laughs> Our 14. Okay, so now we have allowed this to dry. So anywhere that I went outside the lines, I'm just going to touch it with my white gel pen. Kind of cover up some of my little, little bitty mistakes. Because of all the blending we had to do. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of white in here. So we're going to make this look like water. Look at that. That's cool. Okay, I'm starting to roll with these ideas here, you guys. We are making this a picture window to the water. And I'm just kind of putting a little bit of this in for reflection, just anywhere. So this didn't start off as a picture window, but look at what we got. It was so pretty. You love the hearts? The hearts are cool, huh? And then we're actually going to use our multi-liner, but this time I'm going to use the um, 0.1 instead of the 0.5. And we're just going to put some of these in here. got us some little birds flying around in our beautiful little ocean view here and now we have to choose our colors for the card base so I have a whole stack right here I almost think <clears throat> maybe this blue would look really good hold on let me pull it out and I will show it to you I think this blue will look really good for the bottom, but I also think we need one, we need some yellow, I think. I mean, I don't know why I think that, but I think we need some yellow. So we're gonna mat it with yellow. And I think I wanna pick this really bright yellow. It's either that one or banana yellow. No, I think it needs the bright yellow. I think the red would be a little bit too dominating to the color, so I think I'm gonna go with the yellow and the blue. And I'm going to use this super tiny trimmer that I have here <laughs> that I got from Michelle Brownstein, got me this cute little trimmer. So I'm going to use it to just trim off a little bit off the edges, this trimmer cuts really good. So I get, look, it looks like that paper disappeared, but it didn't. There it is. 
Okay, I'm going to do a little bit off the top. So see, this is giving you a whole nother use for this stencil that is so much fun. And wait till I show you the other one I made with that stencil. You guys are not going to believe it. I mean, literally not going to believe it. Okay, so this is super duper cute. I love it. I'm going to trim down this paper. I don't know. This is not going to work with this baby trimmer. I need my regular trimmer. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. Did I even zoom in? I am out. I didn't even zoom in for you guys. That goes to show you where my brain is tonight. Okay, you guys know I need my, I need my trimmer for my actual sizes. So four and a quarter, we're gonna do this one to four. I have really worn this trimmer out this weekend. And then five and a half, five and a quarter. Okay, this is the size I want my mat to be. Now let's see how well this one sits on there. Well, that eyeball in sure was good, wasn't it? Look at that, perfect. Okay, here we go. Where is, I need that back up there. Nope. Yep, okay. So we need our inside sheet for the inside of our card because we know I always use that. So here we go. Dale, there's your birds and your ocean view. I didn't put any boats in there. I could, but I'm not going to. I mean, we could put a little boat. In, well, okay, we're not going to do that. But I could, <laughs> I could draw a little sailboat in there, but we're all just gonna pretend for now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna place the inside in there. When I get it lined up where I want it, then I'm gonna use my espresso. Alrighty. So now we're gonna put this See all this, how heavily saturated it is in that transition and not as much anywhere else? That just kind of helps you see how much ink I was truly putting down on that paper. Okay, we're going to put it on our yellow. There we go. Going to rub that with our espresso. And now we're going to put it on our card. What do you guys think? I mean, you can make this Easter colors for your little flower or... But it, I mean, it, it looks like the lotus flower, but that's not really what I focus on when I see it. You know, I'm looking at the, the view that I have that's so beautiful. You love it? Look at that. Isn't that just the prettiest? It almost looks like a boat instead of a flower. I don't know, that's what it looks like to me. Just saying, just saying. And I really don't think since I drew the little birds on there that we even need the bling. Um, but let me show you what else I did with the stencil. So now that you've seen the whole picture and how easy it is to color. It's a picture in a picture. But here is the stencil underneath all of my markers. Okay, so I also did this design with this stencil. So I took this stencil and laid it here and I traced just this part right here. And then I paid attention really close to about where I put that on there, flipped it over, put it about the exact same place, drew it in there. 
And when I got done, I felt like I was just missing a little something here. So I just took this and lined it up with the center of these two and traced just that. And then I flipped this around and traced just that. So this is a whole different design that you could put this way or you could put it this way. Just thinking outside of the box because this does not look like this. You could even use just these four and you could put them all over as little designs on the paper. I mean, you can make these look like flames if you needed a fire could do just the top ones. But just a few other ideas and ways to use this stencil. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you'll try these stencil designs. I really like them and I hope you guys will too. I haven't seen you guys post any. <laughs> You'd love my outside of the box. <laughs> hey, I rolled with you guys' blend for blue and orange and look at what we came up with. Sometimes you just gotta jump out there and try it and see where it takes you because this really start, turned out really good. I mean, not really, it almost looks like a cruise ship. You know, it kind of makes it look like a cruise ship to me, but um, you never know until you try. So definitely try. Thanks, Meg. So I'm probably going to be heading home either tomorrow or Saturday, and I will let you guys know. I will post when I've made it home safe so you guys don't have to wait until Tuesday. And by the way, Tuesday I might be coming to you from... Idaho, because I fly to Idaho on Tuesday. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Nerdy Crafter. <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching. Love you guys. Come see me again. I'll post this on YouTube if you guys want to follow through it again, because it was a lot of repeat steps. But um, I will see you guys next week. Take care, and thanks for watching. Bye.